What is up? Fix Flair here for Thomas Synthesizers and today I received a very special and very large package from Moog and I don't have to make a secret out of what's inside because you already clicked the thumbnail and you can also see it here in the background. So let's have a look at the 2022 reissue of the iconic Mini Moog Model E. Here we have it, the Mini Moog Model D. Um, and although it's going to be common knowledge to most of you, um, let's first have a little look at this uh, layout here. In case you've been living under a rock for the past 50 years, the Mini Moog um, is one of the most influential uh, synth designs of all time, originally released, I think, in 1970 uh, commercially or 71. So you're not going to find a lot of innovation on this panel because all of these features. Uh, went on to become standard on pretty much every monosynth that followed the Mini Moog because of it. But still, let's start here on the left side. Right here we have the controller section, allowing us to tune um, the synth. It's just a fine tune here. Then we have a modulation section here, um, allowing us to control the effect of the LFO. Here we have the LFO rate. Modulation wheel, controlling the intensity of the modulation, pitch. Pretty standard stuff from today's perspective. By the way, in case you're wondering uh, where's the reverb coming from, right now it's running through the Eventide um, Spring Reverb plugin, which is amazing. It has a beautiful, authentic spring reverb sound. Um, anyways, up next here we have the oscillator section and the mixer section, which uh, makes sense obviously to explain them together because they obviously interact. Because here in the mixer section we can control the volume and have also have an on-off switch for each of the three oscillators. Let's start with the first one here. The range is basically an oscillator uh, octave control. And here we have the waveform selection. Next on switch here is for external inputs. In this case, I don't have an external input, so let's move on to the second oscillator, which has uh, all of the same settings and also a tuning knob um, to um, adjust the tuning relative to the first oscillator, allowing us to uh, create this beautiful detuning pulsing effect. which obviously becomes even more interesting once we add a third oscillator. And lastly here, a noise source, where we can select either pink noise or white noise. And as you can hear, the white noise is a bit brighter. So now we can move on over to the filter section, which as expected has the legendary uh, characteristic Moog filter, which has this super characteristic resonance. Um, um, 
And uh, one of the classic characteristics of the smoke filter is that once you um, increase the resonant, you're going to lose a lot of the bass frequencies. Notice that it seems like I accidentally created the soundtrack to Gaspar Noé's Irreversible, which was composed by Thomas Bongalter of Daft Punk. And it seems like the whole soundtrack is just one note pressed on a mini Moog Model D, as it seems. Correct me if I'm wrong. I guess that's it for my first encounter with the Mini Moog Model E. Um, to conclude, I pretty much went in there with no particular expectation. Uh, as some of you know, I'm super happy with my Moog grandmother because I think it uh, yeah, does a great job at delivering the monophonic Moog analog synth experience and sound and aesthetic um, and workflow. So I didn't really, um, yeah, anticipate any leap in quality or fidelity or emotional response or whatever. Um, but uh, actually, maybe it's all in my head, but it feels like it's just a more premium and luxurious uh, instrument. Maybe it's just the psychology behind the legacy Mini Moog ideology and the price tag. Um, but if any of you have any explanations of how there might be uh, higher quality components in there and how they might contribute to the sound. Feel free to let me know. Uh, maybe it's some sort of pitch instability that's super subtle in oscillators or something like this that makes it just feel a bit more wonky and organic. Um, but maybe it's also just in my head. Anyways, that's it for my first thoughts. Um, in case you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. And apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out. Mm -hmm.